What's up guys? And of course, welcome to another video from yours truly, the Scarinder. And in this how to use video, we're gonna cover Corviknight, the new steel flying bird of the Galar region. It goes without saying, however, we're gonna just cover its stats and its abilities. We're not gonna cover Gigantamax in form as we don't know how viable that form itself is gonna be. And also we're not gonna talk about the Smogon tiers as we're just gonna cover what it could do rather than what it will do as this video is gonna go up before the, the meta has developed. And we're just gonna cover what well what niches is actually brings to the table. It is a three stage Pidgey. It is one of those really early Pokemon you can catch, and it evolves to Corviknight at level 38, I believe. Uh, besides that, before evolving, it is actually a normal flying type. It actually elaborates to become greater as it becomes a steel flying, making itself one of those really exclusive, really strong defensive type with the likes of Skarmory and Celesteela. Goes without saying, though, this is the, that that is the Pokemon that it's going to be compared to, and how much it actually can carve a niche besides them. She also goes without saying that it's really cool to see Carbonite as actually for the first time in a, in a new region since uh, Generation Six that we get, um, well, a starter bird that actually becomes something. Toe Cannon was a complete letdown. Star after actually effectively did everything right, and um, it's just really fun to see Carbonite looks great. And I'm really excited to this Pokemon to use it in game. But with that said, let's go over its stats, its move pool, and of course abilities to find out what it can do, and also go over after that how it compares to its most likely rival, Skarmory. And yeah, let's first, as always, cover its defensive typing, Steel and Flying. It is probably among the best defensive typing. We have immunity in ground and poison, we strongly resist, bugging grass, we are resistant, dragon, fairy. Flying, Psychic, Normal and Steel and are weak to two typing which are very very easy to parry and that is Electric and Fire. Um, sure, it has a few no neutral hits. Water and Ice are probably among them that I think are more common to kind of be forced to cover. But there are defensive switch-ins for this Pokemon naturally. It is defensive typing alone synergizes very well with a lot of other good typings. Uh, and usually, of course, with so many resistances and immunity, you don't necessarily need to be bulky to uh, to work. Which makes this kind of funny, because it is absolutely bulky. Uh, Corviknight's stats are really good. While it isn't um, excelling anywhere, it still is really bulky and it has a physical damage output. Uh, 98 is HP, 87 is attack, 105 in defense, 53 in special attack, which isn't that exciting. Uh, 85 in the special defense and 67 in its speed here. So it's definitely slower, much like steel types are. There are very few steel types that, of course, are speedy, but those that are are really viable, of course. But its defensive stats as a whole is really good. It, it won't attack anyone with the special offensive side. Even though I know that this Pokemon get a special stat boost, it still is not to recommend. But the combination here of 98 HP together with 105 and 85 special defense, this is a bulky bird. It is absolutely a Pokemon that's going to be forced to take hits and do take them really well. And this steel combination together with line really helps it out here. Its abilities are kind of hit or miss depending on how I'm going to use this Pokemon. We have Pressure, Unnerve, and Mirror Armor. Mirror Armor is great in contrast to any lower, lowering of its stats, such of course likes of Intimidate, will bounce back to rivaling Pokemon. A fortunate part is the most viable Intimidators in the game, much like Landers, are not here in the game. It would have been great, of course, we forcing that play on him, but we can't do that. So whether or not it's going to be helpful or not, it's up to see. But Pressure is probably its absolute best ability. Unnerve absolutely is alright, but Pressure is where it's at, consider the bulk this Pokemon represents. But, what does it learn? Well, it gets an array of really decent moves, and you know, look at the like of Steel Wing, Iron Defense, Metal Sound, Power Trip, Home Claw, Fear Attack, Pluck, Taunt, Protect, Fly, Hyper Beam, Giga Impact, Screech, Light Screen, and Reflect. Those two are great for defensive type Pokemon. Rest, Thief, Snore, Retaliate, Air Slash, Body Slam, Agility, Focus Energy, Substitute, Reversal, Endure, Sleep Talk, Swift, Revenge, Fake Tears, U-Turn, so Pivot Option, Payback, Assurance, Round, Taunt again, <laughs> Nasty Plot, Flash Cannon, Iron Head, Heavy Slam, Work Up, Hurricane, Body Press, Scary Face, Iron Defense, again, Bulk Up, Brave Bird, Steel Wing, Attract Facade, Swagger, Drill Pack, Sky Attack, Set Attack, Tailwind, Defog, Rock Smash, Spite, and Roost. 
So, straight off the bat, I want to cover a few things that this Pokemon clearly will do here in the future. I wouldn't say it is a dual dance with Agility Bulk Up set. I wouldn't recommend it because you're forced to, of course, go in with the like of Flying Press and Braver. You could go for Flying Press alone, as I don't believe there are that many types that actually resist that combination, other being Steel Flying types, that is, I guess. But <clears throat> just overall, I wouldn't recommend it. It probably will work. Uh, as flying press alone is enough, but it is unstabbed, and that's unfortunate. I hope, but I can't, don't quote me on this, but I do believe, I hope, that flying press counts as stab, even though it's a fighting move, since it is a combination of flying and fighting. But really, don't quote me on this, I couldn't tell you right now if that is. But it is still a very, very strong niche for it. But the obvious part here is that, much like Skarmory, it is a good taunter. 67 speed isn't the speediest, but you can outspeed base 85 defensive Pokemon. Taunt is great. Taunt together with the likes of Roost is probably plenty in most matchups. It really is. Pressure on that? Yeah. If you're a defensive Pokemon with only one attacking move, you can be Taunt, Roost, Stall together with Pressure naturally. Toxapex might very well have nothing on this Pokemon. And that's really scary. Together with actually being able to set up screens and you turn out, that's incredible and invaluable. Um, <clears throat> besides that, it really is a Pokemon that is super supportive. Tailwind helps, Defog helps, it, it it pretty much becomes what I said about Skarmory. It is, in a very, very many ways, much like Skarmory, a, a weaker move pool, surely, and no Toxic. But it seems like most Pokemon won't have accessibility to Toxic this generation. But overall, it is a really, really good move pool and be able to do stall breaking quite well. And uh, be a bulky setup sweeper with agility and bulk up a fly press. And clearly, of course, Roost to kind of cover for the rest. Uh, but overall, I think it's a really strong Pokemon. It has the, the necessary attacks to work. I would recommend Heavy Slam for obvious reasons. It isn't that, well, heavy. But it gets Iron Head, which is plenty for this matchup. And this meta, if anything. But how does it compare to Skarmory? Well, we can only base it on the moves it gets. And of course, it's that total. Um, sorry, by the way, for this kind of. It looked a lot better pre production than it did here. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, stat alone, Skarmory has two stats that it ex does excel on more than uh, Corviknight. First one, without saying, defense 140 versus 105. Yeah, that's a big difference. And the other one being speed. Skarmory is able to outspeed base defensive 90. Pokemon if it wants to. So that's a really strong ability, but besides that, that's it. That's really is it. Um, because in theory, Corviknight do have a lot more HP, actually 30 base more in its HP. It could very well be just as defensive as Skarmory and automatically make it special defensively better than Skarmory. <clears throat> that one being Ability-wise, yeah, Skarmory's abilities is only born to sturdy be in its most viable aspect. It is a good ability, and with Roost in mind, it's probably plenty. But I do believe pressure does pressure more players, actually, naturally. Um, besides that, Skarmory's move pool is to be better here anyway, because of Curse, because of Whirlwind, it can face. And, uh, while it gets counter and stuff like that, I don't believe they matter as much, but Skarmory also has Stealth Rock, and... It does put a layer on it to get with spikes. It is a more defensive Pokemon that can enable to support facing and of course stacking. Skorak will not do that. It is a taunter, it is a stall breaker, and potential setup sweeper, and <clears throat> just overall a decent tank. But overall, these are of course what we're gonna be fend up against. And since Skarmory won't be in the Sword and Shield, we know already what Corbinite's role is gonna be. It's going to be the exact same role as Skarmory is gonna be, but Corviknight's main merits is, of course, it can pivot, it can set up naturally, and it can stall break. Those are really key features here. Pressure to get with, like I said, Roost and Taunt is going to be plenty for most defensive matchups. It also has Spite to be just that little extra dick over its head. So overall, Corviknight's going to be great in this meta. While I wasn't too excited when I saw this stat, I do also recognize that, depending on what you compare it to with its, its closest rival, it is actually Fury better than it because of its better stats overall, which is, well, quite incredible. I didn't think they would do that. So considering how this meta is going to develop, how viable do I think Corviknight is going to be? 
It's going to be an absolute OU Pokemon, hands down. I don't believe, since there aren't any other type of combination that covers Steel Fly in this generation, it's going to carve itself a necessary niche. It fills the void that Skarmory made, and uh, while it isn't as viable as Celesteela, because very, very, very few Pokemon are ever going to be that viable, it is still to be considered that Corviknight's main strength here is his defensive typing together with being able to stall break. There are so many Pokemon that stall breaks well that are missing, and just knowing that Corviknight will fill that role just fine it has me it has me excited. Um, I want to see the setup sweep for it work also, I think that's going to be exciting to see. Uh, the only flaw I feel, feel that it has is that it can't face. But at the same time, between the others, it, it is the only one that can buy it, so... It has strengths here, and those shine through. I really can't wait to see this Pokemon in action. And yes, just overall, Corviknight is one of the best entries in this generation, and I'm really excited to see it going into the battles in Generation 8. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a great day.